great to be with you today here on Daily Impact. Have a little statue of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. One of your favorites, right? One of my favorites. Absolutely. One of your favorites. This came to us from Tommy Flores. Shout out, Tommy Flores. We have wiped this bad boy down with sanitizer, so it is safe to hold. <laughs> and uh, we got a little Jermaine Bush here. And I'm not sure. There you go, John. I'm not sure what this is. That's Ethan. 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 Price. Ethan Price. You yeah. 3D printed that. Really? <laughs> there you go. Fascinating. <laughs> That's fascinating. Okay. So if you want to send something in, For the you set. can send something in. We will leave it here. And uh, it'll remind us of you. Pray for you. <laughs> I just messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Let's stay We're going to jump into Let's our game. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> Long week, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Long week here, but I'm here grinding daily impact time. He has been grinding. Yeah. Happy Easter. Here we go. So we have a rhyme. <laughs> so we have a rhyme off. Rhyme off. I'm going to give them a word, and they're going to go back and forth as long as they can until the other one doesn't have a word that still rhymes. Okay. Now is there is a five-second limit. It's just one word. There is one word. One word. Me and Mr. Dottie are the judges. They have to be legitimate actually words. Run. Yes, okay. they have to be legitimate okay. words. That matters. They have five seconds. They, if they can't get one in five seconds, moving on. I'm going to say there's going to be multiple times that we can't get one in five <laughs> seconds. True. <laughs> well, these are easy words. We started off. We might do this again. We'll come up some, with some harder words. Here we go. So the rhyme off. So we, we'll start with... Uh, You'll start the first one, the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Okay, here we go. So the word is bat. Bat. So do I say, like, I picked up a bat? No. Just <laughs> a word that rhymes with it. <laughs> like, I picked up. Yes. How did I pick up a bat? I'm kind of cutting an entire rap song on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cat. Cat. Vat. Sat. <laughs> Pat. Pat. <laughs> And I smacked a gnat. Ooh, good. Lat. Uh, yeah. Uh, did anyone say that someone was fat? Was nope. Somebody, nope. Uh, brat? Four. A oh, brat? Three. Come on now. <laughs> Do you have one? Do you have one at home? Uh, I have three. Three brats at home. Two. <laughs> a mat. <laughs> Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Look like I lost that one. Use <laughs> yeah, that rat. Oh, oh rat. Was it you? I wonder how many people at home were thinking a rat. <laughs> Scranton. One zero. All right, you got the start. The word is right. Flight. Bite. Plight. Kite. <laughs> Ah! Uh, okay, okay, stop. <laughs> I don't know. Might? Might! Oh, oh, no. Night! 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 Might? Okay. Fight. This is this is not a good day for me. <laughs> <laughs> we better take advantage of it. I need a win. Uh, okay, let's go. Go you ahead. Got, can you can you handle another? I can handle another one, man. Let me lock in. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. The word is snake. So this is me? Snake. It can, snake. can I say Jake or yeah. Jake? Yeah. Jake. Jake the snake. There you go. Bake. Fake. Flake. <laughs> Goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Rake. Oh, man. Make. Oh, took mine. <laughs> Lake. Lake. Oh, Lake. Lake. Earthquake. Oh, man. He's on fire over there. Fire. Oh. <laughs> ache. Oh, oh back. back ache. There you go. Break. Have we said that yet? Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Uh, two. Wake. Oh. 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 Yeah. oh. Buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> Have we said lake? I, I said, said lake. Yes. Uh, we said Four. Wake. Three. <laughs> Uh, 
Can you think of one? Two to one? Can you think of another one? Steak. I think six or seven of them. Steak. Steak? <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, good stuff. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Here we go. Hey. Good. Let's, uh, I don't think we have time to be real long today in, in the Word of God, but we do want to open the Bible, and we do want to show you something. I am in John chapter number eight. John chapter number eight. We've been talking about temptation, and I don't know how much longer we're going to talk about temptation, but uh, a couple of practical sides of it. When you think about temptation, of course, there's a tempter, you know, and and the tempter is Satan himself, and he's the one who tempts us, and he knows us, he understands flesh, sin nature, and so he sets the snare with the temptation. And um, I want to give you a characteristic of the devil, and it's something to keep in mind. In John chapter 8, verse number 44, the Bible says, You're of your father the devil, and the less of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So something we need to understand about the tempter is that he's a liar. Yeah. There's no truth in him. So it's not like it's not like he even has the ability to tell the truth. Everything is slanted. Everything is misrepresented. And that's our enemy. And he's very good at, at getting us. The Bible says here from the beginning, I want to show you something here in, in Genesis 3, the very first temptation uh, of mankind, at least, was when the devil tempted Eve. And this is what he said to her. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. <laughs> this has been a crazy broadcast, hasn't it? <laughs> crazy time. But, but it says your eyes shall be opened and you'll be as God's knowing good and evil. Here's my thought. My thought is this. And think about This is a good thought. The devil, she already knew good. She had the knowledge of good. She knew what it was to live in harmony with God. She knew what it was to live in a perfect place. She had a perfect relationship. She knew good. The only thing Satan could offer her was the knowledge of evil. And so when she gave into that temptation, now she, she gained knowledge. But she didn't gain knowledge of good. She gained knowledge of evil. And, and uh, she now knew what it was to have a fractured relationship. She, she now knew what it was to be separated from God. She gained the knowledge of evil. But when he said it, it sounded so good. You'll be as God's knowing good and evil. Right. And he's a liar. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's something that we need to understand, that Satan is a liar. You know, as we talked just, just before we got started here, and I opened up to uh, Psalm chapter 91, and I'm, I'm just going to read you the two verses that Satan quotes to Jesus um, in uh, the temptation of Christ. And what I want you to notice is he, he does quote these two verses accurately, but then he leaves out the very next verse. He puts the brakes on right before the next verse. But notice the two verses, and then after I read the two verses, I'm going to read you the verse that he left out. Satan said, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Notice the verse he left out. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. And if you recognize the, that terminology, a serpent is mentioned there, a lion is mentioned mm -hmm. there, a dragon is mentioned there, all typologies of Satan. And that very next verse that Satan appropriately did not read was the fact that Jesus would tread Satan underfoot. Uh, Satan loves, as a liar, to just <laughs> give enough truth there to get you to, to act upon it knowing that he doesn't present you with the whole truth. So where is that passage again in Psalms? Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and you can look at Matthew chapter 4, verse number 6, and you can see him quoting it, leaving it out, and that's a great thought, presenting just enough truth, just enough, to where it sounds right, right. you know, something about it sounds right, but, but, uh, but it's not right. Yeah, when I, when I think of the lies that, that Satan brings and that he tells us, uh, my mind went to the, the children of Israel 
And many times Satan came to him with this same lie, that things were better in Egypt, that, you know, quote unquote, the grass is greener on the other side. I'm here in, in Numbers 11, and the people begin complaining about the manna, about how it's not good enough anymore. And I wonder if that wasn't Satan kind of working there saying, hey, God's not really taking care of you. He doesn't really love you. He left you here in the desert. And the people begin to complain because the devil was telling them that that lie, that things were better in the world, that things were better back in Egypt. And I wonder how many times he's come, even in my own life, yeah. saying, man, things could be better. Just stop, stop following the Lord. Um, that's, man, the, the father of lies bringing that one. Well, because cause he knows that we're forgetful. Yeah. You know, th- think about that, that temptation. You know, man, we had cucumbers in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Well, right. what else did you have in Egypt? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, right. You had slavery. You had a taskmaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've had some difficult jobs in my day, but I've never, none have ever qualified, you know, to where I had a taskmaster yeah. lording over me, whipping me, you know. At but least, they, they had that. Right, at least at one point, all the babies two years of age and under yeah. were killed. Yeah. You know, all the men. Yeah. And the devil kind of leaves all that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going to, we're going to, but we had, we had cucumbers. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, we had some garlic. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times, temptation's that way, you know, it, he gets you to see the immediate and to totally forget about, you know, the past. Yeah. Um, and so we got to be careful for that. Guys, what are some lies that, that Satan tells teenagers right now? I mean, actively. When it framed with temptation, I'll, I'll give a couple. We haven't talked about this at all, but just my mind is thinking here. I'll give a couple, and then if, if you have any, maybe you can chime in. But uh, I think of a lie that Satan presents, and, and, and one of the lies is this, nobody will ever know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just a lie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a lie that Satan whispers in all of our ears. Mm-hmm. Here's some temptation, and nobody will ever know. Yeah. And that, that's never the case. Right. And, and let me stop and say this, you know, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. even if nobody ever finds out yeah. that I sinned, I know. Yeah. I forget who said it, but somebody said, God may forgive your sins, but your, God may forget your sins, but your nervous system won't. Because mm. you'll use it. And by the way, the devil will tempt you and get you to do something wrong. And then he's the one that'll bring it up and remind you about it over and over again and use it like a club oh. to beat you. You know, I thought of when you said that, uh, one thing the devil uses uh, is mistreatment, where you've been legitimately mistreated. Something wrong happens in your life. And instead of applying the word of God and forgiving and, again, diligently making sure that root of bitterness doesn't spring up, the devil will use something legitimate in your life to cause bitterness, to defile you and trouble many, uh, or trouble you and defile many. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and by the way, if you look there at Hebrews chapter 12, the person that's used as an example is Esau. Mm-hmm. Esau, that root of bitterness. Did Esau have a legitimate complaint? Yeah, his brother and own mom mm-hmm. lied to him. Mm-hmm. The devil will use a legitimate mistreatment to, man, when you don't forgive, the Bible says, I think in, in 2 Corinthians somewhere, I think chapter 2, that you need to forgive, otherwise you give the devil an advantage. You know, and, and the devil doesn't need an advantage in our life, but he'll use a legitimate mistreatment. Um, you know, somebody else in the Bible that, that had a legitimate mistreatment was um, Absalom. Yeah. And the story of Amnon and Tamar and Jonadab and Absalom, of course, the wickedness that happened there. But Tamar was Absalom's sister, right. okay? And all that happened, and the Bible says that Absalom, and that's, Absalom hated, hated uh, Amnon. Yeah. He had good reason to, you know, but he allowed that. And maybe, maybe the lie is this, you deserve this. Yeah. You know, I wonder how many people get caught up in, in temptation and sin because the devil whispered to them, you deserve this, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that loved, that loved Tamar but we only see Absalom getting so mad and bitter, and you know David yeah. loved, David loved her, and, but you only see Absalom getting right. so fired up to where he couldn't let it go and he couldn't exercise forgiveness, couldn't do right. Um, yeah. uh, my my mind went to past failures as something that the devil will use Absolutely. to keep us from yeah. 
keeping on, we, we think in our mind, ah, if I did this yeah. before, I messed it before, God's not going to take me back. I don't That's know. Cool. And I was already here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say at the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected yeah. end. And I'm yeah. thankful that even though I I have messed up and will mess up, that man, he, those, he doesn't have that club, that he has those thoughts of peace yeah. and, a, and a plan for my life. Hey, here's a lie that the, that the devil gives us all the time. You're the exception. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. You're, you are the exception. Uh, Samson. You know, when you read the story of Samson, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Especially the dialogue with Delilah. Yeah. You know, where, where he tells her, you know, if you bind me with new rope, you know, and then she does it. Yeah. Who in their right mind continues to play that game? Right. You know she's going to... You know eventually, if you tell her the truth, she's going to take away your strength. But I believe with all my heart, he just thought, man, I'm the exception. Yeah. You know, it won't happen to me. And the devil tells those lies over and over and over again. And mankind, since the beginning of time, has bought into that stuff. Yeah. You know, nobody will know. You're the exception. You're justified in feeling that way, you know. And, um, and I think we just need to understand, you know, He's a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. I love to buy cars. People, I don't think a lot of our teens know this, but I, I love, I'm always shopping for a car. Always. Like, I'll, I'll spend a year. I'm looking right now to, to get something. But sometimes you walk onto a car lot, and you can tell, man, some of the guys are honest, mm -hmm. and every now and again you get one that's just not. Yeah. And you can tell everything this guy is saying right yeah. now is a lie. Right. Everything, you know. Well, that's how we need to approach Satan, sin, temptation. Yep. There's always more to it than what I see yep. initially. The devil's a liar. Yep. That's what we have for today, young people. We love you very much. God bless you. Happy day.